Hey guys, so in this video what I'm going to do is uh, demonstrate how easy it is to perform um, uh, vulnerabilities onto buffer overflows. Um, in more recent times uh, I was subjected to this mainly with using my little Arduino project. Um, I normally work with Java and obviously you can't put the Java classes natively on these little microcontrollers so I've had to learn C++ again which has been a few years. Um, but one thing that became quite apparent to me is on how easy it is to perform buffer overflow vulnerabilities if the coding is not done correctly. So if I quickly show on the screen, um, I have a, um, a main, I, all I have here is a C++ file, um, an exe that's been compiled before, um, and then a header information. So in here, I have a main method that just calls this particular method itself. And all it does is take in the input of the user and then just returns that to the console out. So if I perform that as a quick run, and oh, there's nothing to, yep. So enter a value, one, two, three, and it just returns back one, two, three. There are two parts to here though, that um, there are of concerns and it may not be apparent at the start. One is the, character array is 20 lengths as a maximum um, value. So if I perform um, the execution again, just thinking about it. Just gotta wait for Eclipse. All right, so if I put in a character length that is more than 20, the actual application fails. It's trying to parse more than 20 characters into um, uh, trying to do a, um, uh, uh, an entry into this character length and it <clears throat> obviously exceeds it, <coughs> excuse me, obviously exceeds and evidently uh, shutting down the program. Um, you can use this exploit to um, access other parts of the application. So you can see here, I have a private function and the private function is not accessed through the main method nor is it accessed for the method that it's called. Furthermore, I have a header information that is explicitly highlighting that it is a private method. So from face value, it seems to be that the actual coding is um, uh, up to standard. But um, one thing that I learned um, is how easy it is to exploit this out. I have here a, um, all I'm doing here is um, compiling what um, I was doing in the Eclipse uh, IDE. So uh, G++, I'm calling a name, um, attempting overflow exe using the C++. Um, I'm also passing a couple of parameters stating that no stack protector is enforced and it's a 64-bit. Um, binary. So when I run that, it should again, very slow computer today. Uh, if I find that out where the location of this path is, Very good. So here in the source file, all I've done is created a um, exe file. Um, I'm just gonna remove this because I don't actually need that. Um, I can, however, go back into the command prompt. Uh, it's very slow. is use a function called obj uh, object um, dump. By looking at that um, exe file, I'm just taking the disassembly of that binary 
and then identifying the addresses of all the methods and everything that goes in there into the actual into the actual exe file. So when I run this, all I'm doing now is um, taking the dump file um, of that exe um, uh, structure. So now it's finished. Uh, I'll open it up. And I will pull it across. You can see that this file is obviously very big. Um, it has um, um, quite a lot of data to play with. But the one thing that I'm um, more interested on is the address of this private method. And this can be located within this uh, uh, disassembly. Private, what do I call it? Private function. And you can see here with its uh, with its actual hexadecimal um, uh, with its actual address. So what I can do is perform a script to call this method at the same time performing a buffer overflow. So if I go into um, go back into a, um, this directory, I can see a Python exploit file. And this Python exploit file simply contains a print method and within there I'm just highlighting the hexadecimal path of that method that I wish to call. One thing to note here is it's broken up into little chunks so there are four aspects to it and it's it's in the reverse fashion so all you need to do is add in 00, zero um, at the end at the start of it, it needs to be put at the end the x40 is at the top 15 and 54, which matches this part here. So um, you can tell that hasn't changed for me, but obviously it may change um, um, uh, from time to time. All I'm doing here is adding in 32A characters plus the address that is identified in that object dump. So if I give that a save and run that Python script, at the same time calling the exe file. Once I do that, it's stating to enter in a value. I've already entered in a value, and because of that, it's throwing the uh, buffer overflow exception, but it's also exploited out the private methods, uh, private functions, which is not accessible. And you can see here, like an idiot, I've decided to put my string value of the password in this particular method and it's been reachable despite the fact that um, it should not be because it's of a private method. So very easy to exploit um, and again this is just calling the method and everything inside the method but uh, very easy to do. Um, wanted to share that, I uh, hope that helps um, and uh, I'll update if I uh, elaborate any further. Okay, thanks guys.